While we were out in the streets of the Bronx yesterday uh, getting signatures for anti-World War III independent candidate Jose Vega, the duopoly was hard at work starting World War III. Uh, U.S. House <laughs> <laughs> passes $95 billion Ukraine-Israel aid package and sends it to the Senate. From Reuters, the U.S. House of Representatives on Saturday, with broad bipartisan support, passed a $95 billion legislative package providing security assistance to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan over bitter objections from Republican hardliners. The legislation now proceeds to the Democratic Majority Senate, which passed a similar measure more than two months ago. U.S. leaders from Democratic President Joe Biden to top Senate Republican Mitch McConnell had been urging embattled Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson to bring it up for a vote. The Senate is set to begin considering the House passed bill on Tuesday with some preliminary votes that afternoon. Final passage was expected sometime next week, which would clear the way for Biden to sign it into law. The bills provide $60.84 billion to address the conflict in Ukraine, including $23 billion to replenish U.S. weapons, stocks, and facilities, $26 billion for Israel, including $9.1 billion for humanitarian need. I, I can't even read it. It's so infuriating. I could, I could barely read it. Eight point, especially we spent the day yesterday canvassing in one of the poorest districts in the fucking country. you got people pushing shopping uh, carts. According to Jose, it's the poorest. Yeah, I, I mean, in terms of net worth, I can imagine that since there's almost no home ownership in the Bronx because it's New York City. So in terms of net right. worth, that's probably right. true. There were probably districts with lower standards of living, like uh, the South Carolina district with what's the what's the guy's name? The big uh, pharma uh, Mar guy. I always, Mar uh, oh, uh, James Clyburn. Yeah, why do I always have a mental block with his name? Anyway, yeah, like uh, there's probably a lower standard of living there than in the Bronx. But in terms of net worth, I believe it since the Bronx is almost all renters. Um and yeah, to walk around and see the suffering in the streets there and then to read this, it's just like you, you could almost not even get through it. $8.12 billion for the Indo-Pacific, including Taiwan. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky expressed his thanks. Isn't that nice? Doesn't that warm the heart? Saying U.S. lawmakers move to keep history on the right track. The vital U.S. aid bill passed today by the House will keep the war from expanding, <laughs> save thousands and thousands of lives, and help both of our nations become stronger, Zelensky said on X. That, that's that's a little celebration that broke out on the floor of the House. <laughs> yeah, right. That was the soundtrack to the flags waving. Yeah. It was unclear how quickly the new military funding for Ukraine will be depleted, likely call, uh, causing calls for further actions by Congress. Biden, who had urged Congress since last year to approve the additional aid to Ukraine, said in a statement, It comes at a moment of grave urgency with Israel facing unprecedented attacks from Iran and Ukraine under continued bombardment from Russia. The vote on passage of the Ukraine funding was 311 to 112. Significantly, 112 Republicans opposed the legislation with only 101 in support. That's interesting. So now a majority of Republicans voted no. Mike Johnson is a lame duck. He's done. Far-right Republican Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene told reporters afterward. All right, now we're going to get to Marjorie Taylor Greene in a minute, but we have some more video that we have to play. Here is the scene on the House floor when the bill passed. <laughs> I mean, unbelievable. <laughs> Look at this. Now, listen, I'm no patriot, okay? Uh, the quote for which I'm arguably most famous is, fuck the whole country, which is what I said to Thomas Frank. So I, I'm, not, I'm not a very patriotic fellow. Former friend of show Thomas Frank. <laughs> yeah. Not a very patriotic fellow. But uh, this is pretty obnoxious, even... By my standards. And like I said, I don't really get warm and fuzzy about the American flag. You know, I, I'm not a jingoistic person. I don't have any emotional attachment to this country. But if it if this rubs me the wrong way, it's got to rub the average voter the wrong way. Because to see these people waving Ukrainian flags on the floor of the U.S. House, while, like I said, 
we see such immense suffering here at home, $60 billion to prolong a war that is only going to, despite what Zelensky said, it's going to save lives. No, it's going to do the exact opposite. It's going to get many, many more tens of thousands of people killed for nothing. And you got these fucking imbeciles waving the Ukrainian flag on the floor of the U.S. House. Yeah, that's offensive. Yeah, I, I I listen in to a pretty broad ideological spectrum of the alternative media. And I got to say, a lot of the more conservative identified commentators are calling this treasonous. I mean, in spirit, I mean, it's not probably it's not chargeable. But yeah, in spirit, sure, I, I can see that. I mean, if not this, what? <laughs> right. So there's the scene on the floor. All right, now we're going to hear from the man himself, Mike Johnson, who I hope is a lame duck. If the majority of his caucus voted no, there's good reason to think he might be, unless the Democrats save his ass again, because he's their guy right now. As you'll see, the two parties get along very, very well when it comes to getting this yep. shit done. So who knows? Maybe they will bail him out. But here's Mike Johnson. The House has worked its will. These are not normal times here in the House or around the world, as we all know. And we saw had a disturbance here on the House floor uh, just a bit ago. Uh, I just want to say simply what I think most people around the country uh, understand and agree. We should only wave one flag on, on the House floor. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you, this you fucking double scumbag <laughs> douchebag. <laughs> yeah, fucking scumbag <laughs> douchebag. Mr. <laughs> double talking liar. Now he's going to take issue with the public display of Ukrainian flags on the House floor. This is yours. Own it. You're the one who not only sold out your party, you sold out the entire country. You sold out the world. I mean, you, you more than anyone right now in this moment, yesterday, no one did more for World War III than you. And now you're going to pretend to take issue with the Ukrainian flags? You're going to try to wiggle out of it with some virtue signaling about how that was uncalled for? You're the one who pushed this through. You're the reason they were waving those flags on the floor. And more important than the fact that they're waving Ukrainian flags on the floor, we're going to have World War III. I mean, now, now you have just got kicked the war machine back into gear after your own party successfully stalled it for the last number of months. Anything before yeah. I keep going? Um, what I don't, what I don't Fucking understand, and, and I'm not, I'm, I'm far from an expert on the arcane nature of congressional procedure. Um, why didn't the Freedom Caucus pull the same thing on him that they pulled on McCarthy? Well, I think they're going to now. I think that's what they're going to do now. Well, didn't they do that ahead of him bringing up a Ukraine thing? Like, why didn't they do it before? Because they telegraphed he was going to do this. They had two weeks warning that he was going to bring up this bill, at least. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, perhaps they should have. I'll have to look into, like, what procedurally would have been involved with that. But, yeah, I mean, that's certainly a good point. And I think we know which flag that is. Um, I said these are not normal times. They're not. Uh, the world is, is destabilized, and it's a tinderbox. It's a, it's a dangerous time. Uh, three of our primary adversaries, Russia and Iran and China, are working together, and they're being aggressors around the globe. And they're a global threat to our prosperity and our security. Their advance threatens the free world, and it demands American leadership. If we turn our backs right now, the consequences could be devastating. So this afternoon, the House acted, and we sent over to the Senate, and it will be transmitted shortly, our supplemental national security legislation. And, and make no mistake, this is not a blank check like the Senate supplemental bill was. This is very different. Instead of taking the path of least resistance and uh, bringing up the Senate supplemental on the House floor or just allowing a discharge petition to pursue, which come forward, which would have had the same, uh, same outcome, we gave our members a voice. We gave them a chance. We gave them a better process and ultimately a much better uh, policy. What a weasel. You knew that the Democrats <laughs> wanted the war funding, and so you jumped over half of your caucus to get the war funding, and now you're going to try and spin it like you gave your members a voice? I mean, what a fucking weasley scumbag well, douchebag. Well, well and, and you just have to ask, how does this happen? Because Mike Johnson, one of the reasons that they found him acceptable as speaker was he had avowed that he was opposed to Ukraine funding. So he didn't even you, get them you, the border shit. 
not only did he not only did he give the democrats the war funding he didn't even give he didn't even give a consolation prize to his base he just completely sold them out for nothing at all well that's my question we we have to ask at this point more and more i'm coming to the conclusion as many many people who who watch our show have often urged us to to look at certain things which uh, you know i've been trying to do as much as i have time come on man i mean all of this is a sham even beyond what what we uh criticize it as being a sham um that the donors are running things it goes deeper than that it it is some this is some deep state intelligence agency kind of shit that really runs the government on this level this is why a lot of people raise the alarm about project 2025 about this notion uh that whatever republican gets in presumably trump is gonna use their prerogative as the executive to fire all the deep state bureaucrats but clearly you can make an argument for that because Trump was not able to exercise his powers as president over the military industrial complex because there is a deep state of permanent bureaucrats that countermanded his will, that countermanded his desire. Yeah. And that's backed up by the propaganda arm of the deep state, the media. Clearly, Donald Trump was intimidated, and this is where you always make this point. He's like a bully. You know, he talks big, and then you smack him in the nose, and he runs away. Right. right, um, right. He got intimidated with all the Russia, Putin puppet, Putin puppet shit. Obviously, obviously, he was signaling that he wanted to turn down the temperature and work with Russia. He made, he made that very—he couldn't do it. They wouldn't let him do it. When you look at this with Mike Johnson, who told them that he was not— in favor of Ukraine funding. It's one of the reasons he wound up being this very unlikely Speaker of the House. What happens? What did they say to him? Is it a threat? Is it a promise? Is it both carrot and stick? There, There is an explanation for this, and it's not anything that we're aware of. There's no reasonable explanation for why he flipped on this when he had had a contrary view. It would be one thing if he got elected Speaker on the promise he would do this. He got he became speaker on the promise that he wouldn't. Yep. So what happened? We have to ask this. What happened? Legitimately, what happened? Who spoke to him and what did they tell him? Uh, it, it, did they show him pictures of his uh, children at school? Like, what is it that they do to get somebody like Mike Johnson to 180 like this? Well, I want to go now to Hakeem Jeffries, uh, who gave his reaction to this, because this is obviously something that he's been pushing for a long time, and so he was very happy. He had a great day yesterday. <laughs> this is a moment to choose. This is a moment to choose. We can choose democracy or autocracy. We can choose freedom oh boy. or tyranny. We, need Jose we can choose yeah. truth or propaganda. We can choose Ukraine or Russia. We can choose Zelensky or Putin. We can choose a democratic ally or a sworn enemy. This is a time to choose. The American people have always stood on the side of democracy and freedom and truth, which is why we must stand on the side of the Ukrainian people. We will stand with the Ukrainian people today. We will stand with the Ukrainian people tomorrow. We will stand with the Ukrainian people until victory is one. You're such a fantastic moron. <laughs> yeah. And obviously there will be no victory won. All this accomplishes is more death for the Ukrainian people. That is all this yep. accomplishes. Uh, now we're going to go one last video on this uh, subject. This was Marjorie Taylor Greene outside of the Capitol building giving, uh, I'm sorry, giving, yes, her reaction. I think people have been too obsessed uh, with with voting for foreign wars and the murder industry uh, here in America to actually understand how angry Americans are. Um, when you have the strongest, loudest voices uh, in Republican in the Republican movement and grassroots furious calling for Mike Johnson to be vacated. Uh, the people here, my, my colleagues, have not heard the message. So I'm looking forward th for them to go home on hearing, hearing from the folks back at home. But this is the sellout of America today. 
When we had members of Congress in there waving the Ukrainian flag on the United States House of Representatives floor, um, while we're doing nothing to secure our border, I think every American in this country sh should be furious. It, it's, who's going to vote for these people? H how, how can you vote for these people? They don't serve our country. Are Republicans you deserve to call a vote on a motion to vacate eventually. I, I just I don't think you were listening very well. No, you said uh, you wait for your constituents, okay, but will you ever call a vote? Well, I, but I mean, given what you said, do Republicans deserve to be in the majority? That's up to the people, because this is the third betrayal by Mike Johnson. See, so, I mean, look, there's there's a lot there to respond to that last bit where he asked, do the Republicans deserve the majority? And she says, well, that's up to the people. Again, that's just a level of balls you would never get from an AOC. AOC I was would just never thinking say that. that. Yeah. She would never say that. She would say, of course, yeah. we deserve the majority. Of course, we have to, you know, maintain majority support. She would never go as far as to say that. The other thing that Marjorie Taylor Greene said that I thought was noteworthy there was she said the loudest voices, the loudest and most prominent voices in the Republican Party were screaming that they didn't want this. That is true, but it's incomplete because I would argue even more importantly than that, it wasn't just that the loudest voices in the GOP were saying they didn't want this. Most of the Republicans didn't want this. If you go back to the Reuters article, 112 Republicans voted no, only 101 right. voted yes. So it's not right. just that the Freedom Caucus are this loud vocal right. minority. No, right. they actually represent the majority of the party, which made this triply insulting um, and triply horrible. Um, and so uh, I hope they, they file a motion to vacate. I, I uh, you know, it's just you see a thing like this and I'm sorry. Look, yeah, look, Marjorie Taylor Greene. She's horrible on Israel. She's horrible on a lot of things. She says a lot of things that I find to be pretty abhorrent. Uh, but th they are the only ones in this government who are willing to actually put their political ass on the line to stop World War III. There's just no denying that. It's not an endorsement of them as human beings. It is an acknowledgement of the political reality that there is no faction in Washington, D.C. opposed to this chaotic and suicidal death drive to World War III, other than these people, other than Matt Gates and, and people like her, uh, and uh, who's the other guy, Chip Roy. Like, they, they're the only ones. Prove me wrong. Well, particularly with Ukraine, and that really demonstrates how much Israel is for a lot of the people who are standing up for Palestine. It's the settler colonial element. It's not the war element and perhaps not even the genocide element. It's who's being genocided. Right. The, the, this white on white war, they don't seem to have any particularly strong convictions about. Right. One way or the other. They just seem to go where the wind blows. Um, there's no there's no real anti-war caucus within the Democrats. There is a hey, um, we just went to school and we took a lot of classes about how it's bad to massacre and colonize brown people. And this is causing us a lot of cognitive dissonance. So we have to take a mild stand against it. Not even a strong stand, a mild stand against it. But with Ukraine, there's nothing on the Democrats. You're side. talking about in terms of like the the when you talk about a mild stand against it, you're talking about the people in office, right? I'm talking about. Yes, I'm talking about. The squad, basically. Yeah, so they say, uh, we should have a ceasefire. None of them will go so far as to say we need a one-state solution. None of them will go so far as to openly say Israel is a settler colonial state. It or is how a apartheid about, state. They will not go that far. How about going as far as to say when asked, does Joe Biden deserve a second term? How about going as far as to say, well, I don't know. That's up to the people. That's what Marjorie Taylor Greene just said. Yeah, they won't that go there. would never happen. That would yeah. never happen. No, you you only find that on the right, which is why electorally, politically, these labels just don't mean anything anymore. There there are things that come out of the Democrats I find just as repugnant as anything you would hear from Marjorie Taylor Greene. It's a wash on that level. This is why longtime activists, you would run into them out there when you're campaigning for Bernie. I certainly did. Many of them would say, uh, yeah, you're wasting your time. You know, people come up and, and talk to you, people who've been in the fight since the 60s, 70s. It's issue by issue. Get behind issues. Don't get behind candidates. Don't get behind parties. 
That's why serious activists very often that's where they end up for that reason. So I, I think in our times, that's all the more true. Please clap.